everyone. Welcome to the latest edition of the Bison Video Blog. We've upped the ante again. We've had Craig Bull and Gene Taylor in studio, Jeff. Now we get the head coach of the Bison men's basketball team, Saul Phillips, in studio with us today. Yeah, maybe uh, tall in stature, but certainly uh, with this short ceiling, not, uh, <laughs> you, you fit in the studio nicely, Saul. Welcome. Uh, it's good to feel tall. For, in, my, in my line of work at 5'11", it's... Uh, you I am 5'11". <laughs> you look at my driver's license. <laughs> the other thing is you're saying in studio. We're in Colpac's basement here. I'm going to go cute. grab some ham out of the fridge, and then we'll, we'll yeah. yeah, anyways. Well, it's hard to believe basketball season is here as we're in the midst of football season, but uh, practice gets underway on Friday uh, for NDSU. I think for the last couple of years, I think you've told us we have a young team. I don't know if you can use young anymore, considering these guys have been starting for two years. I know you only have one senior on the squad. As you look at this team, what are your expectations for this upcoming year? Well, you look at it, we've taken, uh, you know, the year after we went, we won 11 games, the next year 14, 17. We've got everybody back. The next step forward is winning more than 17. How many more can we win? I, I think we've got a chance to be pretty good. Uh, but a lot of things can happen. We were well on our way to winning 20 plus early last year, and we got derailed a little bit last year between a bunch of different environmental things that happened. Uh, we just fell off a little bit at the end. So a little, a little stronger finish would put us in a pretty good spot. I just want to see continue to see progress. I think the goal in a program like ours, in a mid-majors like ours, ours, is to compete for a conference championship every year. That is the ultimate goal. That's what I'd like to do. I'd like that to start this year. Let's talk about the conference. No Oral Roberts yeah. this year, which uh, and everybody knows, and NDSU basketball fans, that those were great games. Yeah. Hey, I'm going to miss those games, but what effect will not having the Eagles around have on you? Well... A great effect, actually. <laughs> I feel bad for Earl Roberts leaving. Uh, no, you, you know, you look at it. it well, they were fun games to coach. They were well coached. They were a classy program. Their, their players were classy. Their coaches were classy. They were good for the league. At the same time, it was a one-bid league with having to go through Earl Roberts yeah. while they were here. Now they're gone. Okay, I'm not shedding any tears <laughs> over that. It, you know, I, I guess the competitor competitor in us would like to have them around. We'll, we'll try to get them back up for a non-conference game at some point, continue that. Uh, we've got a pretty good relationship with their staff. But at the same time, uh, as far as them not standing in our path, you know, to try to get to an NCAA tournament, to try to grab that bid, it's not all horrible news for us. Three true freshmen, Brett Vandenberg out of Wisconsin, Dexter Werner, who's the Bismarck kid, and then Corey Brown, who came out of uh, Elgin, Illinois, who was your late signee. Any of these guys impact players right away for you? Brown and Vandenberg both have a chance to get on the court right away. Impact, well, you know, it's hard for freshmen to step in. Lawrence Alexander did the unthinkable last year, yeah. stepping in like he did as a freshman. But even Woodside, Winkleman back in the when they were freshmen, they had redshirted a year. Uh, we'll see. They both will be on the floor. Some of them both have a chance. Dexter will, will redshirt. And uh, the reason he'll redshirt is to change his body around a little bit. He's a ton of fun to watch and a ton of fun to coach. He'll be a good player for us down the road. But... Uh, we need to reallocate some some areas of his body to other areas. You know, I look at your roster, Saul. There's 10, 12 guys, I think, in the amateur pundit in me that says I could probably play. How deep can you go? You know what? It, it's got to sort itself out somehow. Generally, you're going to end up with one or two kids on the shelf at any given mm -hmm. time. So it gets you down. I'm comfortable with eight, eight and a half in a rotation, the half being a guy that would fill in in, in substitution. And when we really have our minutes divvied up the way I like to have them divvied up, uh, I'd say eight and a half is about what our rotation would be at. Uh, could it be a little more? Well, you certainly, it never hurts to have more depth, but we're gonna, we have some guys that are gonna have to handle, you know, maybe not playing as much as they thought. It's gonna, somebody's gotta sit. Mm. Trayvon Wright, I think if you could just capture the Sioux Falls Arena and bring it to the BSA, you would, he would love that, considering he's had his two best games at the Summit League Tournament. What are you expecting out of him to take the next step? Because the fans will see, saw the raw athletic ability, the massive dunks, but it's not, it hasn't been consistent. What are you looking for in his junior year? Well, Trey's biggest deficit is in the strength capacity. And, and teams have really leaned on him, particularly as the years have gone on, you know, as the season wears on, teams get more and more physical with him. He's got to learn to handle that physical play a little bit better. When he's, when he's running around without a body leaning on him, he is electric to watch. But... Uh, Teams just literally beat the heck out of them during the course of a game. You, know, you sit courtside during a game, you can see teams, that's what they're trying to do. That's what I do to them, too. So <laughs> he's working on that. He's, he has put on some muscle. Uh, he'll never be confused with a bodybuilder. But at the same time, he needs to be able to play through some of that contact. Who's your best player? What's, uh, uh, yeah, 
You know, I, I look at Lawrence Alexander, who I think's gotten a lot bigger since the end of last season. Yep. You got Taylor Braun, Taylor Braun yeah. who uh, has been fantastic at times. Well, I'm, I'm thankful in the fact that if I said he single either one of those out, the other one would be really mad at me. <laughs> they, they, they both are elite players in this league. They're both very, very good. Uh, they make each other a lot better, too. Yeah. Taylor had a great summer, and at his size, he's such a unique matchup. Uh, He's really, really quick off the dribble at 6'7", and he finishes uh, so well with good body control around the basket at 6'7", and he's really, really improved his shot over the summer. It's still a little bit goofier looking than I'd like it, but it goes in pretty <laughs> yeah. consistently. Uh, Lawrence just believes that he's the baddest guy out on the court, just the, the meanest dude out there. That, that'll take you a long ways, too. He's, uh, Again, you look at both those kids. We got them both late in the recruiting process. I think a lot of people are looking back at that mm -hmm. going, boy, we had a chance at him and, and probably should have taken him. You really ease into the schedule this year. You're going to play the top-ranked <laughs> team, preseason number one in Indiana, a team that went all the way to the Sweet 16. They bring back their entire starting lineup. They have one of the best recruiting classes in the nation. How much buzz is there around this team starting with Indiana? This is as much as I remember my six years here. I hope we don't overlook them. It's, it's, <laughs> uh, I, I was, it, it was a lot like the Florida game in that yeah. I, I, you know, we played them after winning two national championships, and it really sets a tone going. It's, it's great because, boy, I can mention that about any time things start to get away from us a little bit in a practice, and it, it yeah. brings things back pretty quick. But uh, my wife second guesses my schedule-making ability. She thinks I'm insane <laughs> for doing it. I, it's fun. You know what? It's great. And we, we think we're going to be pretty good, but there isn't going to be anybody in America that thinks we're going to go in there and beat them other than the guys in our locker room because we're just silly like that. We think we're going to beat everybody. Yeah, I dare you to throw a chair. <laughs> <laughs> that was really uh, mad. I actually know the guy that was on the free throw line for, for Purdue when that chair went out there. I, I call him up and see angles, talk to him about some different things. The preseason rankings will come out here in the next in the next 10 days. Everyone expects South Dakota State to be number one, obviously bringing Nate Walters back in their tournament team. Western Illinois had your number last year. Uh, they lose Obi Amagano, who was a really good player, but Terrell Parks is still there. Uh, is it a disappointment in your mind if you're not playing on Tuesday night in the Summit League Championship game? Oh, it's always the disappointment when your season's... Yeah, in some ways, yes. I, I don't want to say that... This team isn't entitled to anything. we got to go out and yeah. earn anything. We certainly have some pieces that will allow us to at least daydream about that a little bit, and what we do with those pieces is going to determine our success this year. I, I really like this team. I'm really excited about this team. I want to see progress. That's going to be my mandate to the team. What they, what they set for goals above and beyond that, what they think they can do, that's up to them. I, I don't think there's a reason to, uh, to dumb down our expectations. I don't, I, I don't believe in that. Uh, but at the same time, I don't necessarily feel like standing up, pounding my chest and saying, we're doing this, we're doing that. We'll, we'll let that work itself out. Yeah, just one senior, but I think you're a veteran team. We are, we are. Yeah. And it, it's, uh, yeah, I, I, that certainly played a part in it. In terms of going through a college season and uh, the length of the season, the, the grind that it becomes for a young group, uh, hopefully we're a little better prepared to deal with that. I, you know, it's funny, Marshall Bjorklund's freshman year, you saw him lose gas about halfway through the year. Last year it was about three quarters of the way through the year. Mm -hmm. He's got to get through a full year. Things like that. All right, guys, you've played plenty. You, you got an idea of what it takes to do this. Uh, you, they, a lot of them on the team can start to finish the sentences that I, I start saying, okay, we, we got familiarity. We've got uh, a comfort zone in terms of, of knowing what's coming next. Let's just go out there and try to knock the world dead. This is, is this the tallest team you've had between Jordan Auberg, who's 6'7 or taller? You got, obviously, Marshall back. And then Chris Kading, who redshirted last year, all their tall 6'7 guys. Is this the tallest team you've had? It's definitely the longest. Mm -hmm. You know, co co college coaches in, in basketball talk more about length than they do. You know, for example, yeah, for example, Dexter Werner's at 6'6, six, six, but his arm span is darn near 7 feet. He's built very, very long. Uh, we're long. We are long, and uh, that's done in part on purpose by recruiting and in part by who we've been able to get to come here. But Corey Brown adds another level of length. Vandenberg's a very long player. Obviously, Trayvon's about yeah. as long as they come. So <laughs> I wanted to ask you one last thing before we go. Uh, Corey Brown's high school coach told me he'll be the best defender when he gets on campus. What did, I'm sure that probably was echoed. Uh, you might have said that to your team if you haven't. How would you think they would respond for a true freshman coming on and saying he's gonna he's your best defender already? Well, I, I know this that uh, 
Taylor Braun would disagree with that because Taylor rips him up pretty good. But <laughs> I had to explain to Corey the other day, Taylor is a first-team all-conference <laughs> player now. You, you're playing against one of the better ones there. I, Corey's got the tools to be a terrific defender. He's got the desire to be a terrific defender. We got to get him um, a little better at, at avoiding screens and some things like that. But yeah, he's got some tools. And you know what? I don't think anybody on our team would take too much offense to the fact that you'd say that he has potential to be our best defender because mm. he's got that skill. That's how he's built. That's what he does. You have a win total in mind? Is 20 the goal? I'd like to get over 20. Mm -hmm. I won't get specific after that. I'd like to win all my games. That'd be great. <laughs> I know that. I have to ask Craig how to do that. That's fun. Uh, I, I, in college, I, I 31 and 0 my senior year, we went undefeated, and the season went by like that. It, it goes very quick. Now, I was the human victory cigar, so I didn't have a lot to do with it. <laughs> You're less at 5'9, by the way. <laughs> uh, that's not true. Get a, a, get, a, 5 11, right? get a tape measure out here right now. I will do this for you on the air. Get a tape measure. I am 5'11. The season begins in just under a month for NDSU. We really appreciate you coming by, and good luck this season. Okay? Well, I was happy to stop by until he got after me. No, I, <laughs> what am I Yeah, exactly. <laughs> or no, he's wanting to talk about height here, you know? <laughs> Neither one of us are posting yeah, anybody up. I'll right. promise you that. <laughs> Saul Phillips here on the preview edition for the Bison Men's Basketball Team here on the video blog.